Praise the Lord, everyone. I don't know about you, but I get excited when I begin thinking about heaven. Oh, what a great place that is going to be one day. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning? And in Psalms chapter 34, verse 1, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Anybody got a praise this morning? My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. This is what we need to do today, church. Uh, verse 3, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Can we take just a moment and exalt that name? Oh, come on, he's worthy of it. He deserves all the praise and the honor this morning. Thank you, Lord. I'm excited about church today. Uh, we've had a wonderful time thus far, but I know God is just getting started. I know he's got great things in store. Uh, welcome to all of our visitors today. We have a wonderful crowd. I believe we give God praise for that this morning. Uh, the church is growing. The church is moving. And I'm getting on board. I'm moving forward with it. I'm thankful for everybody that's here today. Uh, like I said, if you are a guest, we do welcome you. Thank you for coming, worshiping with us on this lovely morning. Uh, we're going to move right along in service. Uh, we're going to start with prayer today. Uh, many of us may have come with a problem or a, a burden or a bondage or a shackle, whatever it may be, but I know a God that can. Says that my God is never changing. Says that he, His power is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The things that he healed people of 2,000 years ago, he's still doing the same miracles today. Uh, but we do have just a few requests I'm going to make known real quick. Uh, Betty Gilmore, let's uplift her today. Uh, Brother Ben's grandfather is still needing a touch. Helen Sellers, uh, Noah Knight, I have been trying to keep up with him. He is making some progress. Uh, but kind of, I want to echo Brother Jason. I don't want just a, a half miracle. I want a whole miracle. And that's the God that we serve. When he does something, he does it right. He doesn't just stop with one blessing, but he completes the job. Uh, let's uplift Sister Hudson today as, as well as Sister Wilbanks. Uh, Mary Johnson, this is uh, Marilyn Dillman, Dillman's mother. Let's uplift her. Uh, and if Izzy would be making her way, she's going to step in for uh, her grandmother, Sister Vernell Sowles. This is Sister Amy's mother. Uh, she needs a touch from God. Uh, she needs the Lord to intervene on her behalf. Uh, so the ministry team, if they'll be making their way, we're going to anoint Sister Izzy with oil today. Also, let's uplift Aaron Lee's dealing with some sickness and all those that's dealing with sickness today. Uh, I'm going to ask you this morning, if you believe that God is a healer, I want you to come up and pray with us that God would move on this behalf. And if you have a situation this morning, let's go ahead and take it before God this morning. God, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for your power. God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy that is made known every morning, that is renewed every morning. God, I'm praying for these individuals, uh, God, that we have made known before you, God, that you would move as only you can. God, you see Sister Vernell, I pray. Uh, I pray for a healing touch to come where she is at in this moment. Uh, God, you are our healer. You are the way maker where there seemeth to be no way. Uh, God, we're believing on a complete he healing. God, that only you can perform. Uh, God, I pray for this very service. Uh, many of us have come in shackled. Uh, many of us have come bound down and afflicted but God you are the redeemer God you are the redemption today God you are still setting people free God and I pray that the spirit of the Lord would have its way in this place today God and we'll be careful to praise you for it all in Jesus name we pray amen and amen I may be crazy you may look at me crazy every Sunday but pastor prayer still works Prayer still works. The Bible tells us to lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. They shall. That's not a question this morning. If you have enough faith, you can move the mountains. And I serve a God that is still moving mountains today. Let's give them another hand clap of praise this morning. If our ushers will be making their way, we're going to move right along into our offering. Uh, this is a great time to give back to God what He has given to you in the past week. Uh, and I know I've said it before, but many people, and I, I heard it just this past week. Brother, I can't afford to give. 
You know, I just thought to myself, I can't afford not to give. God has given more things to me than I could ever thank Him for. So spend this time giving back to God what He has blessed you with. Men of music, if you will. Praise the Lord. You know, today there should be some rejoicing going on in the house. Bible tells me this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I want to share just real quick. Our worship team is getting ready to continue on in service. Uh, but Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness? Fearful in praises, doing wonders. Who is like unto God this morning? There is none like the Lord that I serve because he is Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He was the first and he'll be the last. I'm telling you, we serve a God that's able this morning. And I want to encourage you, there is no one like God. Give God everything that you got this morning and watch what he'll do for you. Let's worship the Lord this morning.
Hasn't God been good? Yes, hasn't God been good? Yes, hasn't God been good? God been good. Yes, hasn't God been good? Yes, hasn't God been good? Yes, hasn't God?
little noise unto the Lord. Come on, we can do it without any music. Let's make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Oh, yes. The Bible says, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Can we lift our voices right now? They lift them at the ball game. Can we lift them in the house of the Lord today? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Do you like the way it feels in the house of the Lord today? Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise and magnify him. He's been good to us. And if you walked in today and you cannot say that God has been good to you, let me remind you, he woke you up this morning. He let blood flow through your veins. He let you put your clothes on, get in your vehicle, and walk into these doors to hear the word of God one more time. And to me, that sounds like a good, good God. He's good to us. He's good because his mercies are new this morning. He's good because his grace is sufficient for us. He's good. If he never did another thing for us, we could still say that he's good. He paid the ultimate price for us, folks. And if you walked in and you don't know him, by the time you leave today, you can know him and you can leave proclaiming the goodness of God. I like the way it feels here today. God's wanting to do something for somebody. If you've never been to Gospel Tabernacle, we want to thank you for being here. Why don't you, why don't you look at somebody next to you and say, we're glad that you're here this morning. Look at them and say, I don't know what you walked in here with. But before you leave, God can do something miraculous for you. Good to see all of our guests here, all of our home folk. Uh, we, had a, we had a wonderful time in the Holy Ghost last Sunday. We had five baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and we're thankful for that. We had some that were filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. I know that Sister Ashley Woodruff was filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Let's give God glory for that. He's good to us, folks. He's good to us. You can be seated this morning. So thankful that we are all gathered here together. Uh, there's nobody that I like to worship with as much as you because you're family. And I hope when you walked in here today uh, that you felt like family even if this was your first time. Uh, just a reminder, on Wednesday, we did take up an offering uh, for the Oasis Medical Center, and uh, we took up an offering of $250. I'm just kidding, folks. That shouldn't be clapped at. We took up an offering of $1,068.94, and I give God glory for that. Thank you for being a giving people. And I promise you this, the word of God is true. It says if you give, he'll give it back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, and men will give into your bosom. And for that, I am very thankful. I'm going to be preaching uh, today out of the book of Jeremiah chapter 2. I'm going to read about 13 verses there. I know that sounds like a lot, but I'm, I'm going somewhere this morning. And as you can see in our foyer area, we do have some small group tables uh, that are set up. Those are the small group uh, activities that we are offering or that y'all are offering for uh, the spring semester that will last to the end of May. And if you're interested in signing up in one of these, hang around after church. Let me tell you, you don't have to be a part of this church to join any of these groups. If this is your first Sunday and you want to join one of these groups, you can. Or if you know somebody outside our church that would like to sign up with one of these groups, they can do that as well. This is not an inclusive uh, deal. This is exclusive. Anybody can join these and uh, grow with us together. We need people that are connected and that are united and that are building things together. So hang around immediately after church. Uh, we'll have that available for you. The book of Jeremiah chapter 2, you can turn there if you'd like or you can follow on the screen. The Bible tells us, moreover, 
the word of the Lord came to me saying, this is Jeremiah speaking here, go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem saying, thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine disposals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness in a land that was not sown, Israel was holiness unto the Lord. Pay attention to that word. That's past tense. Israel was holiness unto the Lord. And the first fruits of his increase, all that devour him shall offend. Evil shall come upon them, saith the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, what iniquity have your fathers found in me that they are gone far from me and have walked after vanity and become vain? Neither said they, Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, that led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and of the shadow of death, through a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelt? And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made mine heritage an abomination. The priest said, Where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me. And the prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after things that do not profit. Wherefore I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. For pass over the isles of Chittim and see, and send under Kedar, and consider diligently, and see if there be such a thing. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet not gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. And this is the verse I want to lean on today. For my people have committed two evils. Somebody say two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and they hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. This morning I want to preach to this church with the title, Broken Cisterns. Broken Cisterns. I'm going to tell you something today. God is here to fill somebody up. God's here to do something for somebody. If you will allow him to. I wish we could raise our hands if you're comfortable all across this house. And I'm going to pray that for the next few minutes that God would speak to us. Lord, we love you. We lift you up today. Thank you for allowing us to gather here together. I pray, oh God, as we open up your word that you would speak to us as only you can in a way that we can understand. God, open up our minds, our ears, and our eyes that we may know you and that we may know your plan for us. God, hide me behind the cross as I preach today. Move me out of the way, God. Let me flow in the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. As you see, to look to somebody and say, God bless you. As many of us have read and studied the Bible and the history of God's people, it is not hard for us to see that history indeed repeats itself. We, the created of God, the called of God, the redeemed of God, have been involved in generations of repetition, generations of leaving and cleaving. Generation is running near and running away. Can I summarize our actions today and the actions of those that have went before us? Just humor me for a minute. We call on the name of the Lord when we are in distress. We cry out to Him in our trouble. He hears us because He is a merciful God. He delivers us with His mighty hand. Because he is a good and loving God. He forgives us of our sins. Because he is a gracious and forgiving God. He crushes our enemy under our feet. 
because he is the Lord, a man of war. We rejoice. We thank him. We praise him. We commit ourselves unto him. And we even make a decision to serve him. But before long, before much time passes, many of us find ourselves back in the same or similar situations that we were at the beginning. Held hostage by the same or similar thing that he had already freed us from. And serving the same or similar idols that God had already destroyed for us in the beginning. It's not the children of Israel that I'm just talking about today. I'm talking about the church. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to me. As we look back on our past... Many of us can see as we're reading the book of Exodus and the book of Judges as we read about the life of the children of Israel and we point our fingers at them and say, how could they turn their back on God after all he's done for them? How could they transgress against God after all that he'd done for him? How can they turn their back on him after he had healed them and delivered them? Well, I want to ask us, uh, we should be asking that question to ourselves. Because many of us has found ourselves in the same situation. If we think truly about how much God has done for us and how good he has been to us, it should blow our minds to think that we could ever turn our back on him. It should be so far from us to think we could ever reject him when he has never rejected us. It seems so hard to comprehend how we could be mad at him when he has forgiven us so many times over, but yet... There's so many of us that find ourselves in that predicament today. I come to preach to us this morning. Verse 13 of my original reading. Jeremiah, the Lord, is speaking through him. And he is talking to the children of Israel. Letting them know that, hey, I'm the God that brought you out of Egypt. I'm the God that let you walk through the wilderness. I'm the God that gave you water when you was thirsty. I'm the God that gave you food when you was hungry. I'm the God that reached down when nobody else wanted to help you, and I helped you. And I come to tell you today, that's what God's trying to get across to somebody. You need to remember what I've done for you in your past. But then he pinpoints two profound evils that the people committed. And the first verse 13 says, as they had forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. They had left the God of their salvation. They had abandoned the Almighty. They had forsaken the everlasting Father. And they had rejected their Redeemer. I want to ask us a question today. Why reject God who supplies us with living water? He said, you have forsaken me and I am the fountain of living waters. Why would we reject somebody who has everything that we need in the palm of his hand? Why would we reject a God who has your miracle this morning waiting on you? Why reject God who has shed blood that can cover every sin in your life this morning? Why are we, we rejecting the God who can turn you around and make you a new creature this morning? He is the source that we need. Revelations chapter 22 and 1 says, uh, John was speaking here, the revelator, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. John is seeing here that there's a water of life that is stemming from the throne of God. 
Revelations chapter 21 verse 6 says, And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. I want to know somebody. Did you walk in thirsty this morning? Did you walk in in need of something that the world can't give you? I want to tell you, you came to the right place and you're standing in front of the right God because he is able to supply for you what you are in need of today. Isaiah 44 and 3 says, For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. And I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. Isaiah chapter 44 verse 17 says when the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for thirst I the Lord will hear them I the God of Israel will not forsake them my God God's wanting to talk to somebody today and he's saying I want to pour out my spirit on you and if you're thirsty I want to give you something to drink because I'm not forsaking you today. He says, I will open up rivers in high places. I'll make water be where you can't and nobody else can. I'll open up fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar and the shit of tree and the myrtle and the old tree. And I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine and the box tree together. Why is he going to do this? That they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord hath done this and the Holy One of Israel hath created it. Can I let you know something today? If you let God step into your situation this morning he's wanting to do something in you that you can't look at it and said man's hands did it I did it when you look at it you're going to have to admit that this was only the hands of God oh I come to talk to somebody today he wants to give you something that the doctor can't prescribe for you He's wanting to give you something that the liquor store cannot make available for you. He wants to give you something that the drug house cannot sell you. He wants to give you something that's not made with man's hands, but it's spiritual. And if you let it get a hold of you this morning, it'll change you and make you into a brand new creature. It's not the change that you're thinking. This is change that you can't even imagine. This is change where five years down the road you look back at who you used to be and you say, my God, how did I do it? Then you realize you didn't do it. God did it for you. The Word did it for you. The Holy Ghost did it for you. It's time we start telling people that come in this door that this ain't no ordinary church. This is the church of the living God. This is the church of the miracle worker. This is the church of the healer of all manner of sickness and disease. This is the church of the great physician. This is the church of the God who's able to do exceeding and abundantly and above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. 
And it's not because of the name on our sign. And it's not because of my name on that sign out there. But it's because of a God who still has the same power that he did in the Old Testament. It's the same God who loves you and is reaching for you today. My God, you got a chance today. You can either run to him or you can run away from him. And I tell you, if you'll run to him today, he's got open arms waiting on you. He wants you to come back home. I'm tired of depressing church services. I'm tired of getting together, singing a few hymns, and going home when we got pews full of messed up people needing a miracle working God. I'm tired of excuses of people saying that was the church of yesteryear. No, he told the apostles, greater works are you gonna do than me? And I'm believing that if you walked in with something, You can leave changed. I hope you believe what I'm saying today. We got a testimony of the goodness of God. Some of you need to join some small groups and let some of our brothers and sisters tell you who they used to be. No, they ain't proud of it. But what we can say is we used to be that, but we walked into an apostolic church, went to an altar, and God got a hold of me. And I didn't change overnight, but he helped me. He strengthened me. He empowered me. He brought me up out of the horrible pit. We don't realize that the source of the fountain of living waters is here today. And I want to preach till somebody realizes it today. I want to preach my heart out to you today. I don't get up here to just preach some garbage to you, but I come to preach something to you that'll save your soul from hell. I come to preach something to you that'll keep you in the hard times, that'll keep you in the good times. I come to tell you about a God who still loves you and who cares for you. I come to tell you about a God who died on a cross for you so you can have life and have it more abundantly this modern day has made God weak it's took the power out of his hands but I want to put it back in his hands this morning and let him know whatever he wants to do he's welcome to do it here today whatever he wants to pour out he's welcome to do it here today I'm tired of restricting God's power putting handcuffs on him. Let me know, God, we understand you can't do this over here, but we just want you to ask this. No, we need to open up our mouths and say, God, I know you're able to do anything. My family's in shambles. My family's in a wreck. The judge told me there was no way I could get out of it, but we're staring in the eyes of a righteous judge this morning that wants to deliver mercy to you. Isaiah 58 and verse 11. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. God's tired of you living a life of bathing in dead things. He wants to bring some water to your life and to let you know he does got better days ahead for you. He does have blessings in store for you but you got to get a hold of the source he is our resource he is our supply he is our water when we are thirsty but we have rejected his fountain of living waters that was the first evil they committed y'all want me to hurry up today too bad if you do I got something to tell you. Number two, he tells us 
in the 13th verse that they forsook him, but then they did something else. They hewed out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. What is it trying to tell us? They made a substitute for God to be their source of storage of water. But they had made cisterns, broken cisterns. The Bible says, well, the Bible definition of what I found of a cistern is a reservoir used to supplement an area's water supply by collecting rainfall. With the lack of springs in this day, cisterns were used to gather rainfall to use during the dry seasons and possibly through all seasons. Can I remind you of the sin of Naomi and her family when there was a famine come to the land? The Bible says they left the land of God and they took up residence in a land that was not from God just because of their present day. The problem was daddy died, the sons died, and all was left was a mama and her two daughter-in-laws. They left the blessings of God because of a dry season. And I don't know why you walked away from God, whether your life got dry or you went through a hard time, but I want to tell you it's time to come back to the land of God. It's time to come back to the blessingness of God because he still has a land flowing with milk and honey waiting on you. They had created an image of God. They created a replacement to sustain their need. But it was broken. Not because they beat it with hammers till it broke open. But it was broken because it was not God. It was made with human hands. It was a storage of water that was not living water. Water that only sustained for a time being, water that could run out. I'm talking to somebody in here that's been dipping from water that's running out on you today. It's dipping out on you. Why? Because it's not from God. It's from the world. And it only sustains for a time being. Let me tell you about a woman that was a broken cistern. The book of John tells us that Jesus went to a certain city and there he sat by a well and he met a woman that had had five husbands and the one she was living with, she wasn't even married to him. But he began to talk to her, wanted to meet her. And as he began to tell her, the Bible says he answered and said unto her, whoever drinketh of this water out of this well is going to thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And the woman said, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. I want to let us know that we are vessels sitting here today. And some of us are broken vessels. We are using things of this world to fill us, to sustain us, to get us through to the next day, to get us through to the next paycheck. But the problem is, is that what we are putting into us will eventually run out and we will become empty once again. We will begin hurting once again we will become depressed once again we will become addicted once again we will be downtrodden once again we will lose our families once again we'll make another trip to the rehab once again we'll, we won't be able to say God's been good to us because we've been putting things inside us that will not sustain I want to tell somebody that this woman had tried marriage time and time again. She was living with another man, but Jesus took time out of his day to meet her and let her know that she didn't have a man problem. 
she had a water problem. I want to tell you, you ain't got a drug problem. You got a water problem. You ain't got a lust problem. You got a word and a water problem. You ain't got a drinking problem. You're not, you're not just an alcoholic because you like liquor. It's because you've been drawing from the wrong well. I want to bring our attention to something today. Some of us have been digging some wells that do not sustain. And they fill us for the time being. But there's going to come a day when it's going to run out. God's going to dry up that well. The church ain't got a hypocrite problem. We got a water problem. Because we've started dibbling and dabbling into wells that are not from God. You've been right relying on a supply today, folks. It's going to dry up. And if it ain't drawn up yet, I hope by the time you leave this house, if you walk under here unrepented, that God dries it all the way up. That way you ain't got a choice but to run back here and to run to God. We are a bunch of broken cisterns walking around and the things we're putting in us. We got so much brokenness and cracks and dents inside of us uh, that it's just seeping out of our sides. It's like that old Tom and Jerry cartoon when they shot him up with a bunch of guns and uh, you look at him and he just got water springing out of him in every direction. That's some of us walking around every day leaking, leaking, leaking. That's why we go back to the bottle. That's why we go back to the pill bottle. That's why we go back to the drugs. That's why we go back to the pornography. That's why we go back to the websites. It's because we're constantly leaking the things that we are putting inside of us. And this may not be what you came for today, but it's what we need. You may be wondering today, okay, I understand what you're saying, preacher. What's the answer? Jesus is the answer. The Bible says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. I want to tell you, God wants to be a fountain of life springing up inside of you. Not outside of you, but inside of you. But a supply that keeps on giving and keeps on stirring and keeps on springing up out of you. How do I know this? Because the book of John says in the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. What's he talking about? What is he talking about? Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. The verse 39 says, But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. I want to tell you today, if you've walked in on empty, if your water supply is low today and you're leaking out of water, if you'll get filled with the Holy Ghost before you leave this room, God will spring up a fountain in you that wants to pour out rivers of living water. I want to let somebody know that the Spirit of God will sustain us in the dry seasons and the wet. We don't have to go to another source during our dry seasons. Why? Because we got the Holy Ghost living inside of us. The Spirit of God will sustain us in the hard times and the good. The darkest valley and the brightest mountaintop. Even when the enemy, the devil, your addiction, your temptation is looking at you dead in your eyes. You still have hope. You know why? Because David wrote and said, Thou preparest me a table in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. 
David didn't say my cup's half empty. He didn't say my cup is three-fourths of the way full. But he said I got a river flowing in me that my cup is running over. And I want to tell somebody today that your cup has been empty for way too long. You've been dipping out of the wrong water supply for way too long. Shaking the preacher's hand has dried up. Repeating the sinner's prayer has died, dried up. But if you get the Holy Ghost power living inside of you. It'll be a fountain of living water that'll sustain you in your darkest days. I'm not saying you ain't gonna mess up. I'm not saying you ain't going to make some mistakes, but when you get this Holy Ghost power in you, it'll give the authority to look your temptation, to look the devil square in the eyes and say, I rebuke you. You're a liar. Get your hands off of me. I got God's spirit living inside of me. Your enemy has been sitting at the table long enough it's tired of you. It's time for you to grab that seat, kick him out of there, and say, hey, this is my table. This is my table. I'm supposed to be looking at you. I come to tell somebody today, you've been on the losing end for way too long. It's time you leak up with God and decide I'm going to be an overcomer. I know you think I'm crazy, some of you folks. I think I was crazy too if I hadn't experienced what I have experienced. Bible says, come and taste and see that the Lord is good. God's got some samples up here waiting on somebody and he just wants you to come up and say, hey, I'm not real sure about it, God, but I'm going to reach down and I'm going to taste it. I'm going to see if you're really as good as they preach about you being. I'm going to see if you're really the deliverer that they talk about you being. I want to see if you're really the miracle worker that they tell me you are. And God's going to say, come on, come taste and see and I'm going to show you just what kind of God I am. I would have never be who I am now if I didn't let go of that back pew gripping it so hard and decide I was going to make my way down to an altar. If I hadn't laid down my pride, laid down of who I thought was going to look at me and talk about me, if I hadn't let that go, I would have never been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. The world's going to judge you either way. You might as well get judged from the winning side. I'm going to tell you what. They're going to leave you high and dry when you go through a hard time. When you go through a tough spell, sayonara, see you later, buddy. But when you're going through a trying time and you got God, he's going to lift you up when you fall in and said, hey, I've anointed you. i got a purpose for you. You're my child. You're my son. You're my daughter. I've called you for such a time as this. But we're... We're dipping out of the wrong well. And, uh, and I want to know who's tired. Who's tired today? Think about it. And I know my time. But I don't want somebody to leave here the way you came. Here, Shaka. Somebody's been in pain. It may even be secret pain. Not told your spouse about it. Not told your family about it. But you've been feeling a stirring in your heart. You've been feeling a yearning for something new. I want to tell you this is it. God's wanting to draw you to him. And make you somebody that you never imagined yourself being. But first you got to step out. And say hey. Devil. I'm tired of living this way. I got to have a new beginning. Let me tell you something about God. The children of Israel, they had a time with God and they forsook Him and they left Him 
time and time again. But if you read the word of God, it'll say, then God heard their cry. If you'll just call out to him today, Jesus, I need you. I don't know how to talk to you. I don't know what you want to do in me. But your word says, whoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want to know today who will open up their voice and say, God, I need you. And when they did, he sent a deliverer, their direction to deliver them out of their bondage. I want us to stand to our feet today. The well's drying up, folks. I feel, I'm going to tell you this, I feel as if God is trying to get this church ready. ready. Not just this church. But I want to tell you, I feel like the Lord moved on me and told me this was the beginning of the ending. He's getting ready to come back. I want to ask you today, are you right with God? Do you have God's spirit living inside of you? If you don't, why leave? Why leave this house? Why leave this house the way that you came? Why walk out with the same garbage that you've been living in year and day after day and struggling with when you can let God take care of it for you today. I want us to bow our heads all across this house. I tell you what, if it's comfortable to you, I want you to take the hand of the person sitting next to you. And here's what I want you to tell them. If you don't want to go alone, I'll go with you. Come on. Tell them. If you don't want to go alone, I'll go with you. As they sing today, if you want a new beginning, if you want a new relationship with God, I want you to come up here this morning. Y'all can go ahead and play and sing. God's here to do something for somebody today.